Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense. Today I've got another first impression video for you guys of two new YSL fragrances, Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau Fraiche and Yves Saint Laurent Lome Le Parfum. I picked up both of these from Sweet Care, which is actually a store in Portugal. I talked about them in my previous first impression of uh, some new releases. So if you're interested in picking these up from that store, I'll leave a link in the description. These are legit, so you have nothing to worry about. Uh, I wasn't sure initially, but I placed the first order, everything was good, and placed this order right after. It will take you a little bit longer to get these in if you buy from there, since they are in Portugal. So you're going to be looking at just a little extra time. I think it says 5 to 15 days when you order through there, and uh, they ship through what ultimately is USPS once it arrives in the United States. So 5 to 15 days is what you're looking at. Hopefully all you guys are staying safe with the pandemic that's going on across the entire world right now. I'm going to try to keep doing daily uploads just so, you know, I've got that kind of regularity still going on in my life with all this other stuff that's happening that is very irregular. But again, hopefully everybody is staying safe. We've got a lot to talk about today, a lot to go over. So let's jump into this and check out Why Eau Fraiche and L'Homme Le Parfum. First off, I think I'm going to go with uh, this one, Y Eau Fraiche. So when this was first announced, it made me think of like Dior Eau Cologne, just the way that the note breakdown was, the coloration of the bottle and everything. That's the first thing I thought of, Dior Eau Cologne. So that's what this kind of came across to me as, like Yves Saint Laurent's version of that fragrance. But I haven't smelled it, so now I'm going to get to it and see if it's close to your own cologne or if it's its own thing entirely. First off, let's take a quick look at the presentation here. Here's a good look at the front of the box here. You see around Y Eau Fraiche. You have the YSL logo at the top of the box though. Looks like that's pretty hard to see. Nothing on the sides. You got the ingredients on the back and then on the bottom, your badge code. And here is a look at the bottle. I really like the look of this. It's got this nice gradient from the bottom up to the top where it's frosted here and then clear at the top of the bottle. On the bottom, you got your sticker with your badge code and the YSL there on the top of the cap. Cap does click into place like all the other fragrances in the Y line. And let's go ahead and give this one a spray. See how it smells. Super fresh off the top. Lemon and ginger, bright, refreshing, brisk, clean. A little bit of sweetness in there, just a little touch. And juniper. Yeah, juniper jumps out. A decent amount of it with some mint. So this one, 1000% a summer fragrance, which is exactly what I expected and exactly what all of you expected. I mean, the name is Ofresh. It's got this frosted bottle. Yeah, that's what this is. So this one smells really nice, very pleasant, easily approachable, easy to wear. High heat kind of fragrance, one that you're gonna wear when you want something refreshing, when it's very hot outside. Does not smell too youthful. This is the kind of fragrance that you could wear if you were younger, middle-aged, or even older. And yeah, to me, as far as summer fragrances go, it's decently refined. So it doesn't have this like big synthetic, kind of uh, syrupy sweetness or bubblegummy sweetness or anything like that. It just keeps everything on the fresh side of things. Yeah, it smells very nice. It's a hard fragrance to dislike, I feel like. Much like Dior Homme Cologne is a hard fragrance to dislike, so is this one. Though, I don't find this too similar to Dior Homme Cologne. And I mean, it's not that it should be, because this is an Yves Saint Laurent that's a Dior. They were released in completely different times. But, um, that's my initial thought, or was my initial thought, that they were just trying to kind of capitalize on that, but no, it's good. Now let's open up L'Homme Le Parfum while we let Y Eau Fraiche dry down a little bit. The Yves Saint Laurent L'Homme line is a line that has some very good releases and some releases that are kind of forgettable. And actually one of my favorite releases in the L'Homme line, which is L'Homme Ultime, the word is now that that has been discontinued. Now, I can't tell you with 100% certainty that that's the case, but that is the word that's making its way around. It's what people are saying. I believe that it's been removed from the uh, YSL website. So, assuming that's the case, YSL has killed off one of their best flankers in the Loam line, Loam Old Team. But now we do have this new one, Le Parfum, and hopefully this is going to be a good release. So here is the box. You can see there Lome Le Parfum. 
You have the YSL on the top of the box, nothing on the sides. Got your ingredient information on the back, your badge code here on the bottom. And here is your bottle for Loam Le Parfum. It's gonna be the same bottle design as all the Loam and La Nuit de Loam bottles. And there's your sticker on the bottom with your batch code. This one has a uh, deep blue coloration to the fragrance. Let's go ahead and spray this one on. Hmm. So, my first initial thought, not the same, not the same, but some of the DNA from the Invictus line, that was my first initial thought, was like, there's a little bit, there's a little touch of that Invictus DNA in here. That, that little bit of bubblegummy sweetness, there's just a little bit of that. Yeah. And the original Invictus, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not. I understand the popularity. I understand why it's popular. I understand why people buy it, why they wear it. I get all of that. Just for me personally, I don't, I don't really like it. Now it does change up. This is not the same as Invictus. Um, there's this little touch of greenery in here. This little herbal touch. That comes out pretty early on. Uh, so that first blast that I got, that little bit of bubble gum in there, that starts to go off a little bit with this green herbal kind of vibe that's coming out from here, which I imagine is from the basil that's in the mid. Yeah, basil, violet, little touch of cardamom, not much. And the cardamom in here is not the same as in La Nuit de Lome. Uh, La Nuit de Lome is obviously one of the most popular cardamom-based fragrances of all time. The cardamom in here, at least in the opening, not coming across like that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on again, just to kind of get that opening couple minutes again. Doesn't come across as much like Invictus to me this second time around. Um, I get more lemon, yeah, more lemon here. I'm not reminded as much of Invictus, so I don't know why that is, but the second time spraying it on my hand rather than on my arm here, not, not quite as much of that Invictus flavor or vibe. And I'm not wearing anything today at all. Um, these are the only fragrances I have on, so there's nothing going on in terms of like conflicting fragrances or anything like that. Yeah, it's a little bit deeper. It's not really a fresh kind of fragrance. It leans more on the sweet side of things. There's a little touch of that cardamom, the basil, and a violet. My initial impression is that I don't really care about it. It's just okay. Um, it's not anything that blows me away, not anything hyper unique. If I smelled it in a store, uh, I would just think, all right, another flanker, whatever, forgettable, not something I'd spray and be like, wow, I gotta pick that up. Okay, so I've let Le Parfum settle here a little bit, let my nose settle a little bit, and uh, my initial impression is that it's just kind of forgettable. It's, you know, it's okay. Like I said before, it is the kind of fragrance that could potentially pull you a compliment, but there are hundreds of fragrances that will do that, and I don't think that this is one that's going to like vastly outperform any of the other major releases out there as far as compliments go. It's not like, you know, Wyo de Parfum or something like that in terms of compliment factor. Amberwood is in here, which is used all the time now. So not really anything here that's grabbing my attention. Little sweet, little floral, touch of spice, Amberwood. It's, uh, it's a very common thread here lately. So Loam Le Parfum for me is, it would probably be like a five out of 10, something like that. Now back to Eau Fraiche over here before we wrap this up. It's nice, I like this one. Yeah, between these two, I would much rather wear and uh, own Y Eau Fraiche over Le Parfum. This one I could actually wear in the summertime. I would wear this without issue. Again, very easy to wear, refreshing, bright. And it's, it's slightly interesting here in the mid. There's this little, little touch of cedar wood, not too much of it. Juniper, peppermint, geranium. Yeah, there's geranium and lavender in here in the mid, which I've talked about over the last uh, couple of videos, but geranium and lavender get paired up all the time. They work very well for uh, modern mint releases, just a combo that people really seem to like. It's nice, this is nice. I don't imagine that this is going to have great performance. I think that this is gonna be the type of fragrance that does weaken off of your skin pretty quickly. So it's gonna be relegated to those higher heat days where you just want something light, refreshing, bright, clean, versatile, and uh, attractive. That's Y.O. Fresh. So there we go, guys. First impressions of Y.O. Fresh and L'Homme Le Parfum. All right, guys, if you've smelled these, let me know in the comments below what you think about them, as always. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.